If you've followed this course from the start, you will now be able to create a game that lets the player move from room to room around a map. I have a small map here, but in principle, the map could be quite big. In the last lesson, I explained how to move the player. But the code is now starting to get quite complicated because I've added several new classes. In this lesson, I'll explain my class hierarchy. I'll show you all my C-sharp code. If you're a Java programmer, watch this lesson first, and then I look at some Java code in the next lesson. I'm Hugh, and this is another lesson in my adventure game programming course. Click the link to the playlist below to see the, all the lessons that are in this course in their order. Now, let me quickly take you through all my code so far. Pause the video whenever you need to take a closer look, or if you want to enter my code into your own project. Remember, though, that the real point of this course is not for you to copy exactly what I've written. It's to explain how you can write your own games. So I strongly encourage you to take my ideas and play around with them. Change my code. Try creating different classes. Experiment. Do your own thing. Anyway, back to my code. Let's look at the main code file. That's program.cs and the main function. You might be wondering where all the code has gone. In the early lessons, I put lots of code inside this single file just to get started quickly. But in the long term, that's, well, that's not good program design. So now I've started to restructure my project. I've decided that the game should be contained within a game object. The main function now simply creates the game object. So this is my game class. Its constructor calls two methods, initGame and startGame. initGame creates some rooms with names, descriptions and exits, and it adds them to the map array. It also creates a player object, which is an instance of the actor class, and puts the player in room 0, the current location. startGame displays a short message, and then it runs the main loop. This reads input and tries to use it to run a command, and it prints some output, and carries on running until the user enters Q to quit. Run command I explained in an earlier lesson. It splits the string that was entered by the user into words and passes this list to pass command. Now in this version of the code I only want to deal with one word commands. In an earlier lesson I showed how to handle two word commands. But here I just want to deal with N, S, W and E to move in those directions and look to look at the current room. My code is only interested in the first word in the list. Here, of course, that's the only word in the list. But in later games, there may be many words in each command. I assign this word to the verb variable. If my command list contains the verb, then I use this switch case statement to call move player, passing to it the current value of underscore player dot location dot n or s or w or e. This is the integer property of the room object of the player's location, which indicates the room index in the map array at one of the exits. If the command look was entered, then I call the look method. The look method is really simple. It just shows this message, showing the name and description of the room representing the player's location. The move player method is also pretty simple. It receives an integer, that's the integer representing an exit from the player's location. If it's minus one, that means there is no exit, so it displays a message to say so. Otherwise, it uses the new pos integer to find the room at that index in the map array, and it assigns that room object to the player's location property, then displays a message. Now let's have a quick look at the actor class. Remember, the player is an actor object. This is really simple. It descends from the thing class. The thing class is the base object of the classes in my game. It just has a name and a description. So actor passes the name and description to its base class to initialize those. Then it initializes its location, which is a room object. The room class also descends from thing. It adds four integer properties for the four exits in the compass directions. And that's it. That's the entire game in its current form. At this point, you can try extending it in all kinds of ways. Add other directions for up and down, maybe. Try creating your own classes to represent treasures. And think how you'd add treasures to rooms. 
then add two word commands to look at a treasure. I'll explain my own solutions to these problems later in this course, but don't wait for me. Even in this simple project, you already have the basis of an adventure game. So see how far you can get in developing it further. In the next video, I'll show you a similar game written in Java. Once again, thanks for watching. And if you haven't already subscribed, do so now. And click the bell to get notifications whenever I upload new lessons.